Hi folks, see you speaking again from my basement. Nice to see you back. Today we are going to deal with two very cheap components and basically playing with the light. One of the components is a photoresistor and the other one is a particular operational amplifier I'm going to talk about. Let's start it. Here what you see in the picture is a photoresistor. How does it work? The grooves you see on the body, they are filled with a photosensitive material and there are just a couple of them they use, not many. One of them is a uh, um, cadmium sulfide and the other one is a cadmium, cadmium selenide. Either of them you use is going to be fine. However, because there are certain differences between them, let's find out a bit what are they. Right here, like some bell shapes, these are, let's say, the bell representing the, what the human eye can see. And the middle of this is the green line, simply because the best frequency we see is representing the green light and uh, the wavelength is around 550 nanometers. The next bell shape is for cadmium sulfide. And this is very close to the human eye actually, just shifted a bit around 600 nanometers. So somewhere around the orange light. The next one, is the cadmium selenide, which is shifted a bit to 700 nanometers. It's not too far. And far away is the infrared, which is already a semiconductor, the silicon. So we're going to go back to use the, uh, the one with the cadmium, uh, uh, cadmium sulfide, which is the closest one to the human eye. Okay? Here is the symbol. The electrical symbol they use on diagrams is a photoresistor. So the symbol is the American symbol of a resistor and the two arrows coming into it meaning sensitive to the light. And finally, the most common samples you can find and uh, the biggest one is about one centimeter. As you can see, the top is the metric system, the bottom is in the inches. Uh, biggest one is about one centimeter wide the one in the middle is about 7 to 8, and the smallest one, very commonly used, 5 mm. So I have them right here. This one is the uh, 7, 8 mm. Here you have the 5 mm. And the bigger one right here, this one, is the 1 cm. These are the photoresistors, so they are sensitive to light. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is we're going to use in our project the cheapest possible operational amplifier you can still find on the market. And I put here some information for you. These operational amplifiers were invented by a genius, Bob Widler, who was working at that time for Fairchild. So he put on the market a operational amplifier, practically the first one sold in big amounts, Mu A702. And this was practically somewhere in 1964, can you imagine, 60 years ago. But then he, he improved this drastically and he put on the market another one, 709. I just have two samples right here, 709. These are golden plated because they were back in time, the military version. Okay, so of course the military in the meantime they have much better circuits, but these ones were the state of the art back in time. And then this was, this was put on the market in end of the um, 1965, but practically it wasn't available before 66. Anyway, in the end of 65, he left the company Fairchild. And the irony is one week after he left, Fairchild hired 
a uh, very talented uh, engineer coming from England, Dave Fulagar, and the first task they gave him was, hey, pick up the 709 and improve it. And this task was given to him to make later on one of the most famous operational amplifiers, if not the famous one on the market, the 741. And it was put on the market in 1968. And don't worry, because in the meantime, our friend, the genius Bob Whittler, he didn't sleep around. So he moved to a company called National Semiconductors. And then he improved himself the 709. And he made another one. He couldn't use the same uh, terminology because this was uh, belonging to Fairchild. But he invented something called LM101. This was the improvement of the 709. And actually, there are three versions of the, of the uh, operational amplifier. 101 was the military one. 201 was the heavy industrial. And 301 was the commercial one, the cheapest one. And I have one right here. Actually, the one I have is the version A, which is a bit improved using uh, field effect transistors at the input. But here is the package they used back in time for the 301, okay? So, for the 741, it's so cheap, even manufactured today, after more than 55 years, imagine. Here is the former military version, golden plated. And here is what they manufacture still recently, um, the plastic version 8 pins. This is 14 pins, this is 8 pins. That's exactly the one we're going to use. So far so good? Now let's see what we're gonna do with this. Let me just make a bit of room. The project actually is going to contain three stages. And I'm gonna draw here just the block diagram first. The big circle here, with the two arrows coming to it, this is the light dependent resistor, LDR. In the top, we're going to have a potentiometer of 10 kilo ohm because we're going to need to do some adjustments. And exactly here is the input of the op-amp, so this is the amplifier stage, we're gonna use the package 741. This is going to be our amplifier. And then, out of this amplifier, we're going to go to a signal conditioner, Because for the logic circuit we're gonna use after that, the op-amp may not give us the signal in the condition required by the uh, logic circuit. And we're gonna use for that a mono-stable circuit using a package everybody knows, the 555. And then the final stage is going to be right here. a on, off, switch. So then, we're going to use for that a bi-stable circuit. What does it contain? It's going to contain a flip-flop 4013. And after that, it is the load we're going to control. Here is the load. It can be a lamp. 
So this is what we are going to use. A lamp can be a motor heater. Okay. So this is the block diagram. If I put it back, just to see how are we going to control it. So anytime I put my finger or anything coming, if not influenced by the light around, it's going to switch the light on or off, on or off, okay? So when the light is too strong, like I'm going to do this now, and there is no chance by putting my hand over it, it's going to switch, then you have to cover it completely in order to make the switch, okay? See? So anytime I cover it, it's going to happen. I'm going to focus now on the first stage. That's what we're going to do today. How do we connect the sensor to our operational amplifier to make it working? Because right here, if you take a look, I'm going to put the light away. You are just going to watch this red light because this is connected to the output of the amplifier. So anytime, let me just disconnect the light. You see, anytime I put my hand over it, something is going to happen. So the light goes on only when I put my hand in the top of it, okay? Otherwise, the light stays off. Let's find out. The main uh, construction here is known in electronics as being a bridge. A bridge with two arms. Here in the bottom we're going to have the ground. So here in the top we're going to have plus 12 volt. We're going to have two resistors 10 kilo ohm each and I'm going to make it big here. An operational amplifier is represented by a triangle and it's called operational because it can do operations. This is why it needs more than one input. It has two inputs. This input here, the sign they use for it is plus, is called the non-inverting input. And the other input here, It wears the negative sign, but actually means the inverting input. So here, on the other arm of the bridge, we're going to have our light-depending resistor. And here, we're going to have a potentiometer, because you're going to see we have to do some adjustment, depending on what do we need to obtain. This is going to be the pin 3, this is going to be the pin 2, that's the circuit mu A741, here is the power supply, the pin 4 is for the negative, the pin 7 is for the positive, and here is the output. So the output here is the pin 6. We're going to have here two other resistors and finally a PNP transistor. Like that. Here we have an LED. We just monitor what happens. That's any common PNP you have. I'm going to put 2N2907, the American one. Okay. And here is going to be the output for our circuit to go to the next stage, okay? So the sizes of the resistors, 12 kilo ohm here, 27 kilo ohm here. And if you want, as a uh, little hysteresis, you can place here a resistor. If you want. 
it's going to be one mega ohm if you use it, okay? It's optional. Okay, then. So this is the potentiometer 10 kilo ohm too. And now, let's see what happens. So, if you put a hand on it, you see the light. So then, let's find out. I'm going to force it right now. But moving it over here, where it stays on. So in that condition here, it doesn't matter what I do, nothing is going to change, okay? Because remember the uh, digital logger relay, which is helping us to connect any AC load we want. And then we're gonna use a multimeter because I want you to see what happens, okay? Okay, one leg stays to the ground. Uh, we're going to measure voltage. Let me see it. Very good, it's a DC voltage, okay? So, when the lead is off, here what I measure, I measure exactly the output of my operational amplifier. And you should see a voltage very close to the power supply. A big voltage, okay? But in the moment, I'm going to put the light on, and I measure the same. It's gonna be around two volts, low voltage, okay? What happens then? What I didn't tell you yet, but I'm telling you now, is how this photoresistor actually operates. When when there is ambient light, like now, because this is called dark activated. What does it mean? In normal conditions, if you do nothing to it, it has a very high resistance. Somewhere it may be hundreds of kilohms, even megahms. But in the moment it sees the light, the resistance of the, uh, of the photoresistor drops to very low values. It can reach even one kilo. So imagine from hundreds of kilo ohms or even one mega, ohm, it, it can drop up to one kilo. So it's a drastic change, okay? So this is why when it sees the light, I'm gonna measure here. So it sees the ambient light. So I'm gonna measure here again, a high voltage. When I put my hand over it, the voltage suddenly drops to two volts, okay? A low voltage, see? So by doing this, the PNT the PNP transistor is triggered, and this is why the light goes on. So this is how it's working, okay? What's nice about it is that right now, it's called dark activated. What does it mean again? Let's make the connection. If I'm moving it on the normally open contact, my lamp, okay? Again, if the ambient light is too strong, it goes from the side, so it's not enough to put my hand over it, I have to cover, okay? Take a look what happens. And I put second time, it changes, okay? If I put the light away to not influence me much, I can use my hand. This red LED changes every time because when I cover it my hand, this is called dark activated because now it's dark over the sensor. Now it's light over the sensor. So when there is light over the sensor, the resistance is very low. Okay? See? That's how it's working. But the other one, we didn't discuss this yet. It's for the next time. This is how we make the on-off switch. So anytime I put my hand over it, the switch toggles. It was off, now it goes on. It stays. So this one doesn't stay, but this one stays. I put it on again, it's off. And again, on, off, on, and off, okay? We did something similar in another video with the touch. But now we don't touch anything, it's just the light. What's interesting about this, though, 
What's interesting is I'm going to use another color for that. Here I forgot to complete this one. This is 2 plus 12 volt. Now here, if we change the arrangement, uh, actually if we change the uh, adjustment for this one, we can use other sensors. So, we have the other sensors right here. So I'm just going to remove it from here and placing another one instead. Okay? Nothing happens. Why? Because you have to change the size of the voltage here in the middle because right now everything is compared in my operational amplifier versus the half voltage from the two equal resistors of 10 kilo ohms on the pin 3. So we're going to adjust it until You see? We adjust this one. Now it doesn't work. Now it's working. See? Now I remove this one. And I use the smallest one. Don't worry. It's a photoresistor. It doesn't have polarity. Okay? It doesn't work because it needs, it needs adjustment. You see this? So practically, either of the three ones I use, they work. Okay? Either one is working fine. You just need to do the adjustment. But there's something even more interesting than that. Let's find out. What if, right here in the diagram, I'm changing the position. I put the light depending resistor in the top and the potentiometer here in the bottom. Can I do that? Let's find out. You cannot have both at the same time. So either the one in blue or the one in red, okay? But when I'm going to switch them and I'm gonna move the LDR here in the top and the potentiometer right here is the same potentiometer. Let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to stop the power. So now, I'm even removing the hysteresis resistor and I'm going to connect my photoresistor to the positive, and I'm going to connect my potentiometer to the ground. And I put the power on. As you can see, as soon as I put the power on, I need to make adjustments. No. I put the power on, the light stays on by default. So this is light activated, not dark activated. So. When I put my hand in the top, the light goes off. You see this? Forget about the load. The load is not an issue now, okay? So the light stays on all the time, but when I put my hand over it or anything else, you see, anything else. So it's right opposite to the original one. So you can make this one either dark activated or light activated, depending on the position of the two elements here in the arm of the bridge, okay? Last thing for today is, what else can you use instead of the lamp? Of course, you can control something else if you want, like, I don't know, an alarm, okay? So I'm gonna add it here. You can have a lamp, you can have an alarm, okay? So let's find out. So this was my light, I leave it alone, and now I'm going to connect something else. I'm going to connect an alarm, okay? It's not that expensive actually, seven bucks, okay? 
and is a very strong one. Thank you very much for today, guys. See you for the next time. Bye-bye.